Ooh, what is up, you guys? And of course, welcome to our Pokemon Wi Fi battle with George, who, of course, is Garander. And I'm really sorry for us to be any uploads whatsoever. I have actually been really sick. I've actually been sick for almost two weeks. Um, basically, got my voice back today. I'm still coughing, but you know, I'm, I'm doing fine. So, with that in mind, I really want to take the time to upload a few battles, and I'm going to be a bit lazy about this ones, and it's mostly because I really want to get up some content. So, therefore, not too complex this time around. And uh, first upload is actually an NUCL match, of course, the NU League. This is against Thomas, of course, the original man, who is a very, very, very prominent team. Now, he did decide to not bring Roselia or Machoke, who are very, very hefty mods against my team. Uh, so I was really glad about that, because that means that I can really work myself around him. Uh, my team is containing Pangoro, Asimaril, Ferrothorn, or Fair Siege, uh, Mismanius, Mesprit, and of course his Zipstrika. Um, Zipstrika hits his team really hard, and besides, if it doesn't have a Scarfer, it should be doing fine. And it has in the power eyes for potential jump bluff. Uh, my first seed is a Stolly set, uh, basically to be able to keep uh, both Machamp and uh, Kangaskhan at bay. Um, I should say, um, the Dynamic Punch still hurt it like 30%, but it's kind of hard to kill it. It's far from a 4th KO, or it is a 4th KO, I mean, so if I get a lead seed off that, I should be able to buy that off. Uh, Asimaril also, of course, is um, in this format, it doesn't have access to huge power, so it's... It's kind of bad offensively, but defensively it's a beast, and of course with Sap Zipper it's real, real nifty, and uh, I decided to have a, since um, Thomas' uh, team is quite bulky, I decided to have a Whirlpool Paris song set. Uh, while not the nicest set, it's at least a set that I know I can use to my advantage against him. So really with all this in mind, I'm just going to start with Pangoro because I'm Scarfed, and uh, really I just want to... Uh, uh, I really just want to hurt something, or not really hurt it, but rather shut it down if I can. Uh, so yeah, with all this my guys, let's go. Like I said, I was really glad I didn't bring Rosalia nor his Machoke, because they are really, really dangerous Pokemon against me. So he's gonna start with Mushana, and Mushana is actually kind of dangerous. Um, not really having anything to hit that thing perfectly. So let's go with Parting Shot, I'm expecting it since he named it Hannah that it could potentially be the store power set, and also these thing packs Dazzling Gleam, so I can't stand in crunch, it's not taking that out. So I gotta go to Iselgor, of course, begin to Asimaril, and we're gonna take this Dazzling Gleam there. I mean, it hurts, but it doesn't hurt a lot. And um, as of this point, I know he has Jinx, I know that potentially has dry skin, but there's no reason for me of actually avoiding going for Whirlpool, and he's actually gonna bring Ethan, which is of course his Saudino, and of course we land in Whirlpool, and uh, pretty much that seals the deal, that's a dead Odino right there. Because you're trapped in a Vortex for 4 to 5 turns. So it's, like I said, it's a very, very mean set. I'm not particularly fond of it. But against both your team, this really has to be my response. It has to be some kind of punishment for trying to wall me out. Um, I've been in a position like this before where uh, a lot of hefty tougher mods are actually being able to warm me out and uh, it's never pleasant so my response to that was pretty much having an anti-tank mod against that and uh, it paid off this time, it really really did. Um, there's no reason to be going for any other move really. Uh, I have rest sleep so I will left always but as of this position there's really no reason for me to do anything else. I'm just going to go for a pool, uh, pretty much keep it going. I could set up a Parasong again I guess or just go for a rest soft show in my set but really I have nothing. So, uh, well, yeah, we're just gonna wait this out, basically. And I get that uh, Thomas was a bit frustrated here, because losing a mod like this is not pleasant. Like I said, it's not the right way to do it. Uh, so anyway, this is the last turn, and I'm just gonna switch out to my Zip Striker, because Zip Striker just outspeed a majority of his team, and um, basically was a nice overall response. I should say Zip Striker is Zap Zipper also, uh, just in case of Roselia, so uh, you know, wallet to the extent that I can, really. Uh, and of course, that means a jump block can't really hurt it either. So anyway, he's gonna fall, you know, nothing more about that. So he's gonna bring, of course, Hannah again. And uh, this time I was feeling that, alright, uh, there's no reason for me to go for Volt Switch. I'm like Raptors, I'm just gonna lose HP, and he's gonna get that back. So I'm better off going back to Beatrix and basically see what it's going up to. And it's gonna go for Call Mind, and you know, that's okay. Um, definitely puts an area where I need to do something here. Uh, while Crunch could hurt this thing, it's uh, probably not even to his kill. 
So I'm better off going parting shot and actually do the same response I did before and actually bring Asmiril because Asmiril actually friend of things out. Um, that was my go to response, if anything. Um, and I know, like I said, I still know Jinx is in the background, so it's something that I have to keep myself aware of. And now Dazzling Gleam does a little bit more because, of course, the parting shot is only reducing it to its neutral attack, which actually does a lot. So it's gonna bring Star, which, of course, is an acronym for the Star Dasher. I'm just going to Whirlpool, and I didn't feel comfortable here. Um, I expected a potential fake out, or actually, the thing I was expecting was, of course, a double edge, and I'm not sure I can take two double edges from this thing because it could be, it might as well be banded as far as I know. So I'm just going to go to my Ifilgir, which, of course, is a fair seed, and that's not going to work. And, of course, Iron Bars puts it back near down there, and uh, he is actually going to switch out. And third seed is my really, really stolly poke. It actually is Gyro. <laughs> Gyro Ball does so much damage on almost everything on the team. Uh, I'm just going for Toxic, there's no ramification for me of actually not doing so. So, you know, that was my go to response benefit. And, um, yeah. Basically, at this point, I'm just going to go for Lead Seed. I basically can't stall this mon out. Um, Scald nor Ice Beam will do a lot of damage to me, since it is a Frip Club after all. And they are usually. More stally, more bulkier, which means there is no power behind that. So I shouldn't really have to worry too much about it. You know, I've been wrong before. Uh, and also, he could switch out eventually. But the, the combination here, plus, it's probably better to whittle this thing down if it's possible. And going for a skull is not a bad play, actually, because getting the burn would probably actually reduce myself a lot. So, not a bad choice, not a bad choice at all. It just. There's very, very few things that can hit this thing hard enough, and I think my opponent is slowly realizing this. And I went for Spice Bagel Tip because I had to. And this turn, I'm actually gonna go for Jar Ball because, well, basically, to be honest, uh, Jar Ball is um, a good response if you decide to switch out for service, and, and nothing on his team actually takes this well outside of Prip Love. But of course, the Leech and Toxic will take him out, no issue whatsoever. And, um,. Yeah, this thing is a beast. I like I said, I felt really bad playing like this because having defensive responses for his defensive mods, um, like stall defensive mods, was um, I felt bad. It's usually not my way, but I needed to do this with those plays. Uh, so anyway, he's just going over an SD, of course, getting a, a lot scarier. To be honest, uh, I was just going to go for Jar Ball because I met his sets before with usually with substitute. So I'm better off just attacking it, and Jar Ball is actually 50% hits. And Acrobatics will actually do 50%-ish. Um, so not bad, actually, not bad at all. And um, I am forced here to either stay in against this next switch in and sack Fair Seed, but then I don't have anything for Kangaskhan. So Kangaskhan is definitely scary. And he's actually going to bring Jinx or Jack. And I did predict an Ice Beam here, and decided to go to Pangor, which I knew could take that hit. But that is not what happens. Of course, he packs the Focus Blast, and of course, he lands it. Why the hell would he not hit that thing, right? So, yeah, that's of course my connect, and that's a dead Pangoro. Boom. So that was like, ah, oh, shit, alright. But I have to presume that he's scarfed in some fashion. That would be his only way, since I didn't see any life or damage. And if it isn't uh, scarfed in any fashion, that means the outspeed, which means Shadow Ball should kill it. Uh, because I'm actually naturally faster, so I will do the obvious play and actually go for Shadow Ball. Uh, the thing is here, he's just gonna go to Skangaskan. Nothing wrong about that, nothing wrong at all. Um, and this thing has Scrappy, which means that I can't stay in, I can't take a hit from this thing, it just is not possible. So I'm just gonna go to Cellular back again. I really just wanna scout how much a double edge potentially does. This is a fodder play actually, but he's actually gonna do a double switch on me, which I felt was a bit surprising. I uh, did not see that one coming. And uh, also, at this point, I decided that, right, I can probably take a hit since I have Thick Fat and not Sap Zipper. Uh, and this is going for Psy Shock, which I eat up, and I go for Rest here. So, yeah, that's um, my response to this offensively pressure mod was being offensive again. Uh, I've, like I said, uh, Thomas, I feel really bad about this because I know that it's really, really tough to try to find a footing for this kind of place. Um, <clears throat> so he's just going to go to his star, and of course it's wheeled down by spikes. And I'm just going to go for rest talk. And luckily for me, I do get the Perish song here, which of course sets him at... Um, 
and a timer which is just all kinds of hell for him and um, yeah I mean there's really nothing else I can do I can just see how much the double edge does and luckily for me it's not a 2 hit KO which means that he is actually getting whittled down by attacking me and I can easily go for another rest at this position um, and his two remaining mods is Jinx and uh, Mushar now Jinx might be able to uh, do some hefty damage, but as of right now, it's pretty much is a dead stop for him. And Mushana would basically fall to uh, the Parish song if I preserved Asmril, which I actually decided to do. I do go for rest here because I felt that was my better move, and then after I'm just gonna switch out to my Pharisee actually, or rather, that was the plan. Um, uh, Thomas will actually decide to forfeit, you know, that is fine, that is fine, I get it. There was not, not a lot of plays left in this game, and obviously, my my kind of, um, I'm gonna be honest and say, of course, my stall place was what ended this battle. Uh, I only lost Pangora, outside of that, I actually was doing really fine. Um, I was being a lot stalled in this battle. And like I said, Thomas, I'm sorry because I, do, I don't like playing like that. I like having faster games. But your team was just so intimidating that my only response to your defensive mods was actually to be defensive myself. And um, I'm glad it worked. I wouldn't surprise if it wasn't working, I actually would have been fine if it wasn't working, but you know, as it stands, yay me. But uh, really, I'm looking forward to meeting you again, and I'm sure, or rather, he has the potential mods that could actually threaten my team. So, um, he did say there was a bad, some bad plan on his side, and I'll agree, he, de he definitely had a better mods for this battle, he just didn't go for it. Uh, but I hope I see him in the next battle. Uh, and for everybody else, I want to thank you for watching, I'm going to record a few more games, hopefully they come up today too. Um, if not, they're coming up tomorrow. Uh, but anyway, I just want to thank you, of course, for watching, and uh, I'll see you next video. Until then, take care. Bye.